Located within the historic center of Lima, which evolved from an indigenous city to a Spanish capital, Barrios Altos is an area rich in culture and heritage. However, as in many Latin American countries, migration to cities in the mid 20th century increased the population and the number of slums, depressing land values and causing the middle class and business to abandon the historic center. As urban development shifted, so too did the attention of the government. The impact of this neglect is best evidenced by the concentration of tugurios, or decayed overcrowded houses, within Barrios Altos, the largest in metropolitan Lima. Embedded in these housing issues is water injustice, characterized by an inequitable distribution of water and adequate sanitation as a result of rationing, overcrowding, and pollution due largely to infrastructural neglect. Here we gather water for the week. We use a hose to fill these buckets. We don't have sewage. We clean manually in lavatories. Sometimes we have to fill this twice a week. It depends if we do the laundry. And for drinking water, we have to boil it. In terms of water, we save water. We only allow people to take out water from 7 to 10 in the morning. We have water all day, but we do this so we can keep the cost down. The problem here is the sewage. When it collapses, the water starts to filter into the houses and it has already caused the floor to subside. This is a strong problem because the day completely collapses, the sewage will be useless. The walls are also being affected. They are expanded because of the damage. Payment is another problem here because the water utility does whatever it wants. They've just sent us a huge bill. They came to check if there were any leaks, problems with the pipes or the sewage. They checked every house and they could not find anything. But then they sent us a bill for more than 1,000 soles. We have been to the water utility to ask them to allow us to change the path of the sewage pipeline, but they demand that we have a certificate of possession which is issued by the municipality, but then the municipality won't give us anything. For example, here we shared the water meter with some people downstairs and the remaining three or four families have another meter. And then, this is how we organize to pay and to clean the toilets and the showers. The families here rotate the responsibility for cleaning once a week. Such injustices have not only been perpetuated by the hazardous conditions of the housing, but perhaps more importantly, they have been rendered invisible by these conditions. The injustices associated with the sharing of a single tap, bathroom, or shower by more than 20 people, for example, are not necessarily a primary concern of residents or even perceived as an injustice in instances where the collapse of housing infrastructure is considered a relatively more serious threat. Additionally, the concept of water justice does not encapsulate all the contributing factors. Environmental justice, however, provides a way of viewing access to resources including resources not traditionally associated with environmental thinking, such as the built environment, like housing. These present water issues are only one symptom of the neglect Berrios Altos faces, and are related to a number of other injustices concerning tenancy, eviction, and safety. Combined, these issues have contributed to the social segregation and stigmatization facing the neighborhood, essentially turning it into an island. This spatial divide was solidified by the widening of Abancay Avenue, shown here in the map,
creating a more physical divide between Barrios Altos and the rest of the city, isolating the neighborhood even further. Opinions on exactly how to address these issues of basic services and reintegration differ and speak to the conflicting interest in the center. This is in part due to its historic heritage and its strategic location. What is common is the notion of urban renovation. However, the key actors, as in the public sector, private sector, and the residents, understand this process differently. This understanding is largely dependent on two factors. Broadly, it depends on a person's future vision for Berrios Altos, yet it is also linked to their definition of, and value given to, cultural heritage. As you would expect, these future visions, definitions of cultural heritage, and thus notions of urban renovation do not always align creating a more challenging environment for collaboration, efficiency, and sustainability of interventions. Entonces, el componente residencial nos parece que es fundamental para mantener la vitalidad de eh, la ciudad. Ahora, si Barrios Altos... Eh, la gente de Barrios Altos no somos conchudos, no queremos que nos regalen, queremos comprar. Eh, no somos, ¿no? Nos ven como de mal vivir, como gente delincuente y necesite. Entonces, al tener el mejoramiento de las viviendas, vamos a tener pues, otra visión. El mundo, al menos, va a tener otra visión de lo que es Barrio Santo. Lo que... no, se, no se reduce solamente a los edificios, tiene que ver también con las tradiciones, con las costumbres, con las cosas que desarrolla la gente en la ciudad. Entonces... Que este proceso de planificación y de hacer el plan sea participativo. ¿no? Okay. ¿Para qué? Para que se pueda incluir digamos, de manera adecuada la problemática y por lo cual se puedan llegar a soluciones sostenibles. Que realmente la población organizada eh, primero descubra o se redescubra a sí misma en esta lucha por la vivienda, eh, que ponga en agenda la importancia que tiene. Porque hemos vivido muchos años a espaldas de lo que sucedía en nuestra ciudad. Me parece que ya es el momento de que nosotros cambiemos nuestra familia. Oye, la primera visión, en los casos de que no se pueda construir, que el espacio no dé, oye, definitivamente arrancas por los servicios. Claro. Nosotros que tengamos pues, el agua y el desagüe independiente de nuestra propia quinta, de tener un caño, pues no, y que esté ahí, así sí. no, y la cola y todo eso. Es lo que más quiero, bueno, nuestra propia vivienda. Within this current state, the development trend is market-led with little government intervention and weak implementation of plans. The consequences of this kind of development have impacted the state of basic services like water as well as land use and land value, which has begun to push people out or remove them via a process of slow illegal eviction. Ultimately creating the conditions for gentrification, such challenges are linked to the area's strategic location in the center of the city. On top of this, infrastructural neglect persists contributing to conditions that make the process of eviction less controversial. The power dynamics and processes that drive and reinforce these current trends leave the future of this area and its residents uncertain. Well, I, I would think that in Barrios Altos it's very difficult to people to acquire land there. There, if they want to stay there, it's going to be very difficult to access any program that, that help them to people do to that. Stay there. I think right now for two reasons. First, not only because the historic um, and, and the historic value as, uh, as, as, as uh, these, uh, these buildings can have, but also because of the expansion of the city and the new uh, roads that are being made, this zone <coughs> is going to gain value as land. So, in terms of the current situation. Our original hypothesis stated that in Berrios Altos, water injustice is embedded within housing issues. This injustice is being perpetuated by the disjuncture between the discourse claiming homes are at risk of collapse and policies complicated by the historic character and various boundaries. The resulting interventions do not address residents' right to water and legal tenancy. Rather, their focus is urban regeneration without participation. We posited that water justice is ultimately being ignored in favor of legal evictions in a bid to advance redevelopment plans unchallenged. This was confirmed insofar as the severity of water injustice 
is being masked by the issue of housing, reinforcing its invisibility. This suppression of water issues or dominance of housing, however inadvertent, has meant that neither residents, the MML, nor the water utility, Setapal, are as aware or sensitive to issues concerning water, so the issues are not readily addressed. This increases the residents' vulnerability to risk concerning their health if there is inadequate quality or supply, their personal security by way of the conditions manifested in overcrowded environments, as well as safety hazards in the form of building collapse due to leakage. That is not to say that housing is not a significant issue. As this map indicates, a high portion of buildings in Barrio Saltos are at risk of collapse, most of which are made from adobe, However, the minimal number of policies, plans, and programs meant to ameliorate these issues have thus far been superficial and poorly executed. As our hypothesis alluded to, this is in part due to the burden to comply with the regulations associated with the historic character of the area. Finally, we found that water justice is indeed being ignored, at least by owners, not necessarily to advance redevelopment plans, but rather in ways that are leading to other social injustices. In fact, our field work, which included multiple transect walks as seen in this map, a small sample of semi-structured interviews with leaders of Quintas, as well as a focus group, revealed that water is being used as a weapon to facilitate evictions in a number of ways, including deliberately not connecting the house cutting access or disabling infrastructure in an effort to contribute to houses being declared uninhabitable. Whenever they are trying to evict us, what they do is that they break the pipes, causing leakages. We only have one meter in the Quinta, and they have been cutting the pipes. So the last water bill was for 1,500 soles, and we are only two people living here. When we were 11, we paid 200 soles, and now suddenly we are paying 1,500. This is just one element of the insidious process of slow market-led evictions driven by land use change, infrastructural neglect, and insecurity of tenure. This process of eviction relates back to the fact that there are different visions of urban renovation. However, they remain visions alone as none have gained any real planned traction. Essentially, there are three options for urban renovation and the integration of cultural heritage. The first gives prominence to the history of place as defined by its location. If urban renovation embarks on this path, then Berrio Saltos would essentially become a town where the memory of its history is preserved without retaining the historic buildings or the people. Let's say we are the victims of a big explosion and that we lose the buildings of the historic center and it's just the space what's left. And I think the space itself is going to continue being considered as the historic center even without the buildings. There is a reading of cultural heritage of the city which will continue to have its historic center. The second version gives priority to historic structures focusing on maintaining the historic character. This seems to be the current paradigm as the Ministry of Culture imposes strict standards for the rehabilitation of historic buildings. However, this version of urban renovation excludes the residents from the notion of cultural heritage. The buildings here have been preserved since the time of the colony. It would be really nice to continue preserving these structures from back then, from the colonial era. If they are improved, it could be attractive even for tourism. In order to resist eviction, combat water injustice, and achieve transformative change, a third option that includes renovation with life and memory should be considered. Holistic in both its understanding of urban renovation and definition of cultural heritage, this option could be a real alternative. More specifically, this option would recognize Barrio Altinos as part of the cultural heritage. It would also include the reintegration of Barrio Saltos with the rest of the city, build a multifunctional area, social and physical rehabilitation, inclusion via participation, and explicitly address water issues, altogether achieving environmental justice. 
There are several strategies or support mechanisms necessary to undertake or achieve this final version of urban renovation. Most importantly, urban renovation needs to be reframed as more than structural rehabilitation alone and lead to a shared understanding of the process by all stakeholders involved. The development of a common goal could provoke stakeholders, namely the public sector, including the municipality and national government, the private sector, and residents, including community organizations, to coordinate efforts and resources through a tripartite partnership. This type of partnership is a current gap and as such market-led development and commercial interests are driving the changes in Barrios Altos. Currently, a strong shift in land use is taking place in Barrios Altos as indicated by the map showing the growth of the commercial activity from 2006 to 2012, most of which transitioned from residential use and thus required the removal of residents, often by eviction. Our transect walks revealed that this commercial growth often materializes as storage facilities. Storage is not only illegal, but it is also changing the physical and socioeconomic landscape of the area. In some cases, only the interior of buildings are modified, however, while the exterior facades are maintained so as to disguise the true use. Furthermore, the building numbers are removed, creating an additional challenge to resist these slow evictions and increasing the invisibility of water. As storage requires no people or basic services, accountability of the authorities is diminished. Interestingly, our fieldwork hinted at a spectrum of resistance and vulnerability to evictions, depending on the type of owner. The main owners are the Beneficencia, which comes under the municipality, the church, the University San Marcos, and private owners. While this map shows that approximately 40% of Barrios Altos is now used for storage, more importantly, it highlights the fact that the majority of these facilities are located in privately owned buildings. This suggests that those living in privately owned buildings face greater threat of eviction. Other commercial activities taking over the residential use include museums, shops, and office space. The decision of owners to sell their property and change its use is influenced by the fact that low-income tenants do not often pay market value rent making commercial use more profitable and discouraging owners from repairing their properties, eventually leading to overcrowding and degradation. Another factor driving this trend is the demand for land in a city where supply is limited. Barrios Altos is especially desirable because of its strategic location in the center and proximity to projects such as the Via Parque Rimac. However, this investment in consequential land use change is not necessarily in line with the city's vision or the desire of the residents. More appropriate private investment in Barrios Altos is limited as the area is rife with properties in disrepair, safety and security problems exist, and there are poor water and sanitation services. To resist this current trend, urban renovation and the role of cultural heritage must be grounded in reality. Urban renovation cannot consist of isolated activities. Interventions must be comprehensive, encompassing urban infrastructure, housing, public spaces, and social services to be successful. This type of action requires some sort of integrated plan, however flexible, yet current plans consist largely of passive measures like laws, decrees, and regulations. Though it is clear the municipality is ultimately responsible, a tripartite partnership via the participation of the private sector and community is key and there are various models of how to coordinate this and ensure accountability. Participatory development is one model through which a strategic plan can be developed by this group of actors and executed through projects designed in partnership but ultimately carried out by the local government with support from the other actors. In theory, this reduces the power of any one stakeholder, thereby avoiding politically motivated projects, for instance. This model can also maximize efforts while at the same time providing direction for investment. A potential forum to facilitate the dialogue and coordination required to reframe urban renovation and develop a comprehensive plan is the Development Council of Lima Cercado, or CODEL. Though its launch has been delayed, CODEL was envisioned as a forum to, among other activities, propose priorities for investments in infrastructure and services, 
to increase quality of life and develop a participatory budget. As this map indicates, the council should be comprised of both city councillors and neighbourhood representatives beyond Barrio Saltos from the rest of its district, El Cercado, which could mean an opportunity to reintegrate Barrio Saltos into the city. Expanding membership to representatives from the private sector and Pro Lima, a public body to serve the historic centre, would help enhance its function. This would be similar to the participatory development model of the Executive Planning Committee in the Comas District of Lima, which, albeit with limitations, was successful in developing and coordinating strategic plans and acting as a forum to reconcile differences between actors. As a civil institution, CODAL could promote preservation and renovation interventions through the political agenda and provide continuity when the government changes. To succeed, this strategy requires not only for the Council to be formed and a fair action plan to be developed and executed, but also for the projects to be evaluated based on a comprehensive set of indicators, including those related to quality of life and actions to be modified accordingly. As the reframing of urban renovation should give more explicit priority to water, if this strategy is achieved, water justice should be addressed. Provision of basic services should be considered a first step in the process of renovation. Yet currently, there is no clear mention of upgrading water infrastructure inside the household in the Destabilization Law 39415 or in interventions and plans. The presence of city council members on the CODEL would provide a direct channel for the community to voice their concerns to the municipality and argue that adequate water facilities are a necessary step and a potential catalyst for urban renovation. Ideally, the provision of water and sanitation should be a transition stage to urban renovation that can help to develop policy with a more sustainable normative framework. This, we know, is a minor improvement and not necessarily an urban renovation action. Another strategy key to this transformation is collective action and community organization at a larger scale. Our fieldwork revealed that community action does exist, but is often restricted to the plot level. Even though we found many housing associations have been formed, as demanded by Law 29415, residents claim that many are not registered due to the 1200 solas fee, limiting their access to rehabilitation programs. Because of the strict guidelines of the programs, a number of these housing associations have united to form larger umbrella associations such as El Gremio and Sepru to help support the Quintas via dissemination of information and promotion of norms and regulations, as well as support in case of evictions. They also champion the supply and guarantee of basic services, especially water, as it is a basic need and can mobilize the community. In Barrios Altos, many homes do not have direct connection or reliable access to water supply and sewage, leaving them vulnerable to injustices described earlier. Likely based on information from Setapal, this map used by the National Institute of Civil Defense illustrates that Barrio Saltos has near full coverage of both primary and secondary pipelines. This is misleading, however, as the map does not show the limited number of water connections within the households and thus does not explain the unequal access to connections. For instance, we found that these houses do not have connections and must acquire their water by other means, such as water truck. Similarly, civil defense's statistic that 74% of the population have connections to the water network inside the household does not reflect the reality, as it does not take into account the issue of distribution, which we found to be a contributing factor to water justice. This means official statistics are actually contributing to the perpetuation of this false reality, reducing the level of effort by local and national authorities to address water problems. There is an opportunity to provide supplementary information to the municipality by a self-enumeration, which would make visible the issues and encourage them to develop effective strategies to overcome water injustices. The housing associations would be the obvious group to initiate and organize such an activity. As this map shows, the two main umbrella associations, El Gremio and Sepru, currently work in the same general area but do not have a working relationship. 
Thus, the potential exists to join forces to increase efficiency of effort and increase the visibility of their common issues. There are several ways to improve communication and increase information sharing between these umbrella organizations. Platforms such as Facebook are a useful and neutral space to achieve this as well as begin dialogue and reveal commonalities. The fact that there are 500 leaders in the centre is significant and is a real opportunity as these leaders hold the capacity for transformative change. Creating a forum for dialogue and collaboration amongst this group in the form of regular meetings could also lead to a more unified voice for an even larger area and in turn even reintegrate Barrios Altos into the centre. CDAP, a local NGO that promotes citizen participation, is one organization that already has a presence in Barrios Altos and thus could take an active role in facilitating these proposed activities. We will also be granting the leaders of the Umbrella Associations access to this talking map we created with Google Maps that could be used as a tool to track any number of issues, including community activity, land use change, and evictions. It can also be used as a tool to store and spatialize the information from the process of self-enumeration. This exercise would result in an official form of recognition, which can be one method for resisting slow market-led evictions by proving their residency. As well, as mentioned previously, self-enumeration can be used to catalog the state of infrastructure and necessary improvement. This information could be passed on to authorities, but could also be used as official documentation to prove to Setapal that investing in maintenance and connections is mutually beneficial as it would increase their customer base. While these two first strategies are important, unless economic housing for Barrio Altinos can be ensured, renovation with life and memory is not possible. One of the main issues in Barrios Altos is security of tenure. Although Peru is considered a country of owners with only approximately 10% renters, 79% of those living in Barrios Altos live in rental homes or occupy without payment, which has left them much more vulnerable to eviction and risk. In some cases of private ownership, the owner is difficult to identify for a variety of reasons, including death with no heir and subletting a space multiple times. In these cases, residents are more vulnerable to multiple versions of slow eviction, such as closing off one room at a time, piece by piece demolition, or an individual claiming ownership with potentially false documentation and not honoring existing tenancy agreements. They have tried to tear this hallway part by part in order to make this house uninhabitable and to difficult the mobility of the residents. Worse still is that in some cases, water is used as a weapon to create conditions that lead to eviction. This can be done through cutting access to water points, creating unfavorable conditions for residents that encourage them to leave. Further, owners can disable water infrastructure, which can lead to leakages causing the water meter to run, the bill to go up, and ultimately water to become unaffordable. In addition, the lack of basic services and damage done by water leaks contributes to the conditions necessary for civil defense to declare a home uninhabitable. Deliberately exacerbating poor conditions has undoubtedly contributed to the fact that 73% of the structures in Berrios Saltos are at risk in the event of seismic activity. This map points to the fact that although all major landholders own high-risk buildings, the majority of these buildings are privately owned, reinforcing the claim that residents of these buildings are most vulnerable. Our fieldwork also revealed that certain owners have greater access to programs that could benefit residents. For example, Mejorando Mi Quinta was a national program that aimed to eradicate the first level of vulnerability by providing basic services but the target properties were clearly those owned by the Beneficencia, as highlighted on the map, which fall under the municipality. While the program was successful in achieving its goals, funding was left unused and never extended. Building upon the positive elements could be a potential strategy to ensure dignified housing, secure water, and move toward water justice. For example, the program declared courtyards public space thereby giving access to provide water connections inside the Quinta, where before access to these once private spaces required permission. 
Additional state interventions that could assist in providing secure tenure and affordable housing include buying land when ownership is not verifiable, credit to tenants to purchase property, rental subsidies, and financing to owners for repairs. Alternatively, a successful private sector example of this is from Mexico City, where private investors acquired properties for restoration and resale to the public, and the developer made arrangements with the banks to give low interest credit to residents. Additionally, the municipality can promote mixed income buildings, which allocate a certain percentage of units to economic housing by incentivizing the private sector through various means, such as granting construction rights, tax incentives with a time horizon, and agreeing to install water and sewage infrastructure. It is in our interest to densify with good quality housing and a good type of resident that is totally identified with the area and that likes Barrios Altos because of its traditions. Mixed income housing could help to not only promote the densification of the center, but also it could encourage the integration of social classes, help reintegrate the area into the city, and ultimately destigmatize Barrios Altos. The current stigmatization has been a barrier to residents' ability to improve their living standards on their own, as access to credit is limited by the perception that residents are unable to save. Within the association, we started saving from last year. We opened a savings account and every resident has made a deposit of 3,000 soles. And we are making monthly deposits of 300 soles. Though these types of saving groups exist in limited numbers, they are one strategy to gain financing. Remarkable potential exists if the number of saving groups are able to reach a threshold and combine their efforts at the neighborhood level. Scaling up to this level could mean enough funds to purchase properties as a community, thus ensuring their role in the urban renovation process cannot be denied. Each of these strategies is dependent on the other, and thus the support and operationalization of these strategies is vital to realize urban renovation with life and memory. If executed, together these strategies can help achieve water justice in Barrios Altos, which will exist when residents' right to an equitable distribution of water, including reliable access and adequate sanitation to maintain a healthy life and livelihood, is given explicit priority. Although improving water issues might not be conceived as an urban renovation action, it can truly be a transition to a better quality of life and act as a platform for transformative change. Viva mi barrio salto, viva barrio sin paz.